We're clearly talking about the Olympics. Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka are two brave athletes willing to share their mental health story about just they want that to come first over anything, including winning championships. Both champions made courageous decisions to put their athletic activities or careers, better yet, on hold to take care of their mental health. But other athletes may be afraid to make such a bold decision. And what if you're not a champion or an Olympic gold medalist? Is there room for other athletes to do the same thing, to put their mental health first? All right, well, joining me to have just that conversation, sociologist and civil rights activist, Dr. Harry Edwards. We also have psychiatrist, Dr. Carol Lieberman, both coming from the West Coast, which seems to be the best coast right now. Uh, Dr. Edwards, we'll start with you. I wanna welcome you both, better yet. Uh, why are today's athletes, in your opinion, more vocal about their mental stability than we've seen with past athletes? Well, I think it's the uh, era that they are uh, participating in. First of all, you have the impact of the social media, which has given them uh, definitional authority over their own outcomes and circumstances. Uh, this is something that has been rare for athletes because that has been dominated by the mainstream sports media, oftentimes, which had no real understanding of the athletes, their communities, their circumstances, and so forth. Women have been particularly uh, victimized by that situation, and black women especially. And so Naomi uh, and Simone speaking out like this uh, has been um, a, ter a ter terrific uh, outcome of these Olympics. In fact, I would say that the two things that will uh, prevail will be the impact of the pandemic and the long haul downrange kinds of outcomes for athletes who are participating and the message of uh, Simone and um, uh, Naomi about mental health, which is not just about their mental health, but about the mental health of people in society because of the connection between race and uh, society uh, and sport. Well, speaking of that, I'm going to direct this next question to Dr. Lieberman. Um, yes, they are brave and they are speaking out, but they're also not only just getting support, but they're getting backlash. Dr. Lieberman, why do you think that is? It's as if they're not viewed as human. Well, yes, that's a good point. She's the goat, right, uh, Simone? So, yes, it seems almost not human. Uh, Simone is, a, is an inspiration. I, I don't know how many people... I um, mean, the general public realize uh, what she has had to overcome from her childhood, you know, being in foster care, a mother who abused substances, being adopted, fortunately, by wonderful uh, parents, and uh, and then, of course, being sexually abused by um, the doctor uh, for the team. So she has, you know, she, she if anybody has a reason to have uh, demons, certainly she does. Um, and yes, of course, it's sad to the you know it's hurtful to have backlash. But I must say, I do see a, a, another side of this that um, because she's such an inspiration, um, there are and and for people who do know what she's had to overcome, it gives people hope. Like you're, you can, it's never too late to make your dream come true. So when she um, granted, it's showing that she's human by saying you know that she has these problems, but. Uh, I, I just think that it can really um, disappoint people. I, I don't want it to give kids who are, you know, on their school teams the idea that if they are having a bad day or, um, you know, not feeling right at the moment, uh, that they can use that as an excuse to quit. Absolutely. Thank you for that. And Dr. Edwards, um, this last question is going to be for you. Um, from Jackie Robinson to Bill Russell to today's athletes like the Williams sisters or even the British soccer players that we saw, they have to have an extra layer of mental pr protection, better yet, because they're also dealing with another layer of racism on top of being criticized for whatever um, sport they play. Can you just talk about how they deal with all that mental anguish well, most of the time, what they do uh, is to try to warp it into their um, outcomes in terms of their perspectives and uh, so forth on the sports that they're participating in. Bill Russell in 1961 boycotted the game because the hotel that the team was staying at would not allow him to uh, eat in the restaurant. Uh, you have Carlos and Smith. You have people such as uh, Arthur Ashe, most certainly uh, Jim Brown. Uh, Kurt Flood, all of these athletes have fought those battles, and each generation of athlete has those battles to fight. Uh, I would also say in this uh, era, 
because of the social media, Simone and Nicole can speak to these young people who have aspirations about being athletes and not so much disappoint them, but to let them know that they don't have to give up their humanity uh, in exchange for a gold medal or a trophy or a championship victory or whatever. They can be human beings. They can be who they are and still uh, participate in sport, but they cannot succumb uh, to the pressures to simply be one dimensional. Uh, what Nicole and, 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 and uh, Naomi are saying is, uh, I play tennis. I'm, that doesn't make me a tennis player solely. I participate in gymnastics. That does not make me simply a gymnastics athlete. And I think that the great service that they're doing to these young people is to let them know that you can be a human being and be a great athlete as well. And if the world doesn't understand that, then you have an obligation, not just a right, but an obligation to go on social media and say, hey, wait a minute, uh, you cannot simply athletically traffic me and expect me to bend to your uh, illusions and delusions about what it means to be a great athlete. I'm a human being too. And in that, there is hope for us all. Athletically <laughs> traffic me, powerful words. Dr. Harry Edwards, Dr. Carol Lieberman, it was a pleasure. Thank you both for your insight.